So Lynx is a free app that you can download from any app store. You can have it on MacBooks, Chromebooks, um, Apple devices, Android devices, um, even Amazon Fire tablets. So it looks the same across all, all those platforms. When you've downloaded Lynx onto your first device, you can then create an account. Now, the best place to do that is at the uh, linkscloud.app website. And when you want to create your account or sign in, you can do single click sign in. You can even scan a QR code to sign in. I usually use my email address and there I am, I'm now signed in. Now, when you are signed in, you've got access to a drives area and that's because you get a Lynx cloud. That means that you can um, save any document you create from your device to the Lynx cloud and then access them on any other device that you download Lynx whiteboard onto. As I mentioned, Lynx is totally free. Um, however, if you wanted to use the app version within our Clever Touch Impact screens, you would need to be a Clever Touch customer because you would need access to our Clever store to, to install the app. Um, but you can, of course, have links on a device that you plug into a screen and, and use. Um, you can also um, sync up Dropbox, Google Drive or OneDrive um, as other cloud areas. So I could go into my Google Drive area and all my files are there that I could download onto my device or open up uh, into the links. So let's have a look at links itself. So here I am in links. If I um, show you what you see when you first open up links, we go to the dashboard. So you'll see this area here where you can open up files and you can open files from your uh, local documents or of course from those cloud drives that I've linked up to. And the great thing about links is that it will open up pretty much any type of file. So it'll open up smart notebook files, Active Inspire, Google Docs, Google Slides, um, PowerPoints and so on. You can convert them into links files. Um, also, if we go back, you can of course create brand new files. There's also a games area of some interactive simulations and things like that that you can create within links too. And there's a browser area as well. Um, and you can have more information on all, all of this um, in other training sessions. But what we're going to focus on are the 12 tips for links um, that we think make it really interactive. And we're going to start off with four tips. And the first one that I'm going to share with you is about how you can use the background layer to help you create uh, protected sort of templates that you might want to use. So here I am in Lynx. Um, it's a nice simplistic interface that works well across all the different platforms. And I've started to create um, a differentiated activity all to do with um, vertical edition. Now down at the bottom here, you can see I'm using the cursor tool so I can select the things that I've already made and put them onto the screen. Now, if I go to my text box area, I can add extra text. And that's what I want to do. I want to add an extra text box in as a title. So this activity today, the learning intention, as we call it here, is that we're going to be learning how to set out and use the vertical method. And this is for addition. Now I've created my text box there, but it's not in the same font as the others. If I clicked in here, I could have selected one of my three default fonts that I've set up. But it's easy enough to change the one that I've already made. So whenever you click on something in links, whatever it is, even if it's this rectangle here that I've created, let me just undo that moving there. You'll notice a little pop up menu comes up, a floating toolbar uh, comes up with various things that I can do. So it changes depending on what it is. So if I click here, you'll see I've got some different symbols. So I could change the color of the font that I'm using here and also if I go in here I can change the style so I actually want style two and I want to make this underlined and I think I'll centralize it as well and I want it to be a little bit larger now as you can see I'm using these little nodes here um, just like I can use the joystick there to rotate uh, my text box let's do that and um, if I'm using a touch screen it's even smoother so I'm just going to yeah, over to the side here to the touch screen that I've got this link to, 
and I can just enlarge that to the size I need it to be, and then just slide it into place uh, very easily. So there's my title that I've added on. Now, I also want to uh, make this lesson uh, differentiated. So you can see that I've got a red group uh, area here. Let's get rid of that text box. A red group area, and I need some rectangles for the yellow group and the blue group. So that's easy enough to do. If I go to this plus symbol, there's all sorts of additional tools. And one of them is insert shape. So I want a rectangle and for the yellow group, of course, I need that to be yellow. So I'm gonna drag that on to this area here. Now you'll see as I'm dragging it on, that it is, it's blocking out the text boxes underneath, which isn't fantastic, but that's fine. This is a new thing I'm adding to the page. So by default, it will be above all of the other things. So if I go back to the cursor now, I can select this. I can reposition it. Um, I'm going to click on the nodes, make it a little bit larger. But as for putting it back a layer, that's easy enough to do on the floating toolbar. This icon here is arrange and transform. And this is the one you'll see me using the most for this tip. Click on there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this yellow rectangle back. So now it's behind the other items on the page. Now I'm also going to go to these three dots here because what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of this yellow rectangle to save me some time. So I'm going to clone it and now I have an extra rectangle and I can pop that in position, but it's the wrong color. So on the floating toolbar, I can now make it blue for the blue group. So those are my three differentiated areas. You can see that I have the red group doing no exchanging for their sum, means no extra tens will be created. And I've got my sum written there ready. I've got the um, blue group sum written here and they will be writing out the sum themselves, but I've got no sum in here for the yellow group. So I need to create that. In my pen tools here, I've got a range of pen tools. I can set three different pens. So I've got an ink pen at the minute, a fine tip pen and a highlighter, but I can change those. One of the useful ones is a maths pen. So now when I write on the screen, it will change any mathematical symbol I put, put on there into an image of that symbol. I also have the text pen. So when I use that, I can do exactly the same and it will convert my handwriting into a font. The difference between those two pens is that this is just an image. I can't edit it. Um, so I'll just delete that. And this one, it is an actual text box. So I can go in there now and I can delete that and change the, um, what it says and so on. But I'm not gonna use either of those, but those are two ways I could have done that. Um, so what I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to go back to my text tools and use my default text. So here I'm gonna create my um, sum now. So uh, let's see, we're going to make it 3,749. Go underneath and we're going to make it 1,365. So you can see there that sum will involve lots of exchanging. I'm gonna add in the add symbol. And now I'm going to move that into position on my screen. And I need it to be larger. So it matches the, uh, the one next to it. Slide that over. You can see how e easy it is to do that. Now, I also want to add in the line for the answers area. So if I just highlight and go into my editing tools, I can add in the underline there. Now, as for the bottom line of the answer box, I can add that in very easily as well, just using one of my other pens. So in here, we have a line pen. I'll use that to add in a line underneath there. So there's my answer box. Now, at the moment, all of these features that I've added to this page, the children would be able to pick them up and mess around with them. So the line, uh, I'm still on the line pen. Let me just undo that. So if I was on the cursor, I'd be able to pick up things and, and move them around whenever I needed to. Um, but we don't want the children messing around with what we've created. We want them to annotate on the top and leave our content alone. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of the content uh, now. So if I just go here and click and uh, hopefully drag, he says. Oh, I see that box is a little bit too large for me to click out of. There we go. That will prevent that from happening again. So here we go. I'm going to select all of these items. So the red box, all the text, going all the way across to the blue box. That's everything selected. So even though I've just highlighted and selected multiple items, I only have one floating toolbar. Now I'm going to arrange these. And this time, instead of sending them forwards or backwards, I'm actually going to send them all to the background layer. So now I'm in the background layer and you can tell that you are because you have an exit background option here. So if I was to click off here now, I can still pick these up because I'm in the background layer where I've sent them all. So if I exit the background, you'll now notice I cannot now click on any of these items. I can't click on the rectangles. I can't click on the font. I can't do anything to those. So that's perfect. Even better now is that if I invite a student to come and write on the screen, or maybe multiple students, so let's say I'm going to pick this pen and this colour uh, to write on the screen. Um, so actually I'll, um, yeah, that colour's fine. So now I can have multiple students writing on the screen. Um, it's a 20 point touch on our screens. Um, and so they can scribble away on there, but I, when I use the eraser, you'll notice that it will erase what we've done on the screen, but it won't um, erase the original text boxes because they're all protected in the background layers as if they're under a, a pane of glass. So now we can have students coming up and having a go at completing these. Okay, so if we're doing this one, if a student makes a mistake, and puts the wrong value in, of course. We've got the eraser. Just go back and rub that out. We can have another go. Okay, fantastic. And then, of course, when you want someone else to come and have a go, you can just erase what they've done on there very easily. Now, of course, you're not going to create just one template. Um, you aren't going to give the uh, students in each group just one sum to complete. You might want extra children to come up and be interactive on the screen. So we want other pages with sums on again. So to do that, I'm going to come to this um, slide viewer here so we can see all of the slides we're going to go through. And this is the screen we're on currently. Now, there's a little, little hamburger menu, hopefully you can see there. When I click on that, one of the options here is that I can duplicate the page. So now I have a second page where all of these items are in the background. So if I try and click on them, I can't um, do that. But obviously I want to edit the numbers. So let me just uh, close that down. So I want to change these numbers. So to do that, we go to our little plus menu where we added in the shapes. And at the top, we've got edit background. So now I'm in the background layer, it says exit background. And now I can change these numbers. So I can go in here and uh, make them all different. I'll only change a few of them for now. Um, so for example, this one here, I can totally change this sum for something entirely separate. Let's say 2,910. And uh, once I've changed that, you'll notice then when I go back to the previous page, I've got my two templates. So I've used the background layer to create two pages of sums that the children can complete with me at the beginning of my lesson with everything protected in the background layer. So that's the end of tip one, creating templates using the background layer. I'm now gonna go on to um, the second tip, which actually uh, we, we've called this our tip three. We're gonna, I'm gonna do my two first, then I'm gonna pass on to Jilly to do her two tips. And tip three, um, or the second one I'm showing you, is going to be all about using some of those similar features to make an interactive diagram and layered images. So I'm going to create um, a layered diagram all about the systems of the human body.
And I want to have an image uh, for each of these labels here, each of these systems, the muscular system, the skeletal system, circulatory and the nervous system. So the first thing is I need to find an image that's going to help me do that. So I can do that using the media search. So in my content area from the plus icon, I'm straight away into the media search. We also have the local content area as well. This has got preloaded in content that the links developers have given you, such as interactive maths tools and lots of other useful content as well, such as flags of the world and so on. But I want to use the media search. So I'm looking for an image that's going to show me the layers of the human body. And I can pick all of these websites to search in. We have Unsplash, which is professional photography photos. We have videos in YouTube or Pixabay. We've got clip art, GIFs, and I'm going to go to Bing here. Right, and the perfect image is here. So if I just drag that out, and I don't need the media search anymore. Okay, I've got this in standby in case my internet went down, but I don't need that one. I'm going to drag that to the bin. So here's my image. I'm just going to enlarge it so we can have the diagram as big as possible. I actually only want four of these images because I've got my four labels here that I created the text boxes. And I need to separate them because at the minute they're all side by side. It's not a layered diagram. So I need to use the crop tools. So in here, in the um, next to the plus is the crop sort of area. So when I click on that, we've got various tools. We have a fill tool, you'll see me using that in a minute. We have a block highlighter. And in here, we've got the four different types of crop tool. You'll see Jilly using this one in a bit, but I'm gonna use these other three. First of all, I'm gonna use the crop rectangle. So around the skeleton here, I'm going to drag my rectangle. And that will, when I let go, give me a copy of the skeletal system that I can drag out of the way. Next one I want is the muscular system. So this time I'm going to use the crop freehand. And so I can just start dragging this around the shape. Here, yeah. there we go and let go. And there's my copy of that, move that as well. Next, I'm gonna use the uh, knife, which allows me to slice. So if I wanted to slice the um, circuitry system. I can just use the knife uh, twice. Let's grab it again. And slice down the other side of this image. And now, when I pick this up, you'll see it's it's totally separate from the original. And finally, I want the nervous system, which is here. So I will use the crop freehand for this one. Let's drag that all the way around the shape. So I'm using my mouse. It's much nicer on a touch screen. Okay, so those are my four images. I've got those stacked up over here and I don't need these two anymore. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna highlight them both and I'm just gonna hit delete on my laptop. So now I've got my four images that I want to use. Let me just drag them out again. But you'll see they've all got this annoying white background. It doesn't look very good, even the one that's a rectangle here. So I want to get rid of that. So there are two ways that you can get rid of um, the uh, background. So the first one is that when you click on an image, you've got the remove background icon. It looks like a raindrop with a line through it. So I'm going to remove background. Now, if I try that on some of the other images, it might work, it might not. So on this one, it hasn't worked. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go in here to the fill tool and I'm going to go on the transparency option. So now when I click on this area, it will remove the background and I can carry on doing that to the others as well really quickly. So now I've got my four images and they don't have a background. So now I need to layer them. So the one that I'd like in the background is the circuitry system. So I'm going to grab its label and we'll pop it underneath there. So now I want those two things to join together. So if I drag my keyboard over them both, you've got an icon in the floating toolbar called group items. 
So now they're one. I'm also going to arrange these and I'm going to send this one to the background layer. You'll notice all the other things fade out a little bit because we're in the background layer, not the normal layer. So let's go back to the normal layer. So I can't pick that one up anymore. So now let's put the next shape that's going to go on top, which is going to be the nervous system. So I'll just position that on the top there. Grab the nervous system label, and I'm going to join those two things together as well. Group. And next we want the skeletal system. So this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the label for the skeletal system, pop it on the top, drag that over those, join them together and slide it into position. Oh dear, it's underneath the nervous system. Not to worry, I can still leave that there and then go to arrange and transform and we can bring it forward. So there it is on top. And finally, we want to pop the muscular system. So I'll put its label there, drag and join them both together again using group items. And we've got the same issue that when I bring it over, it's underneath the others. So we go to arrange and transform and we bring it forwards. Now we want this to be an interactive layer diagram. So the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to select all of these three that are in the normal layer. And I'm going to go to the three dots menu. And one of the options in there is editable while presenting. So now that I'm editable while presenting, it means that when we start this as an actual presentation from here, so here I go, I'm going into start presenting. Now it means that I can peel away each layer of the body when I need to. So I can peel that layer away, and that layer away and so on. And also what I can do is I can click on the shape and with this eye symbol here, I can use a transparency slider so we can peer into the next layer underneath. And I can even move that away while it's invisible too. And then I can peer into the final layer as well, the one that we put into the background. So that is how you can make an interactive layered diagram using Link's whiteboard. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna stop sharing. And if you just bear with us while we transition over, Harvey's gonna mute me and we're gonna pass on to Jilly who'll present the final two tips uh, for this morning. Sorry, I might have muted you a bit too, <laughs> a bit too early there, Gareth, my apologies. Um, but yeah, thank you very much, that was great. Uh, looking forward to tips. Looking forward to the rest. Uh, um, yeah, so hopefully you will be able to hear me okay. Yep. And, and hopefully you'll be screen. able to see my screen in just a moment as we swap those over. So can you hear me okay there, Harvey? Yeah, and I can see the links uh, whiteboard. Can you hear? Yeah. Just a little technical glitch at the moment. Can you hear me? If we can just hopefully get that back. Your, your audio on. Yeah. Are you sharing? I'm sharing. Sorry, just click on how it's if you're muted or not. No, I, I can hear you. I can hear you. I'm. If you go back to the um, the Zoom page, stop sharing. Yeah. Let's see if Harvey's there. Oh, Harvey's not muted. You just can't hear him. Yeah. Happy, are I, you there? Can we hear you? Yeah. I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're good to go, Julie. I'm good to go. So can you hear me okay? Yes. Oh, uh, okay. I'm just going to go back into my sharing and hopefully we'll all be able to hear me. 
Are we able to hear that right to say yeah? Perfect. So I am going to do it's top tip number two, um, which is actually our third one in our series now that we're doing for yourselves, hopefully. And then I will go on to our final tip of the day. So the tip I'm going to share with you today is creating an interactive scene. This is great, particularly down in early years and things like that, because it's great to be able to come up to the board and navigate and really bring things to a life. So I've opened up um, just a normal page so it's just white to start off with so I need to bring in some content to start sharing so down at the bottom at the toolbars I'm going to go to the little plus sign and I'm going to click on content um, and within the content I'm going to use our media search so the story I'm going to share today is the Gruffalo it's one of my favorite stories and I'm sure many of you will be familiar with it um, so I'm going to type in, oh, I want a snowy forest as my background. And I'm going to use a Giphy this time. And I can, the lots have come up. I'm going to have a little scroll through to see which one I like. Oh, and I'm going to choose that one. All I need to do to get that content on is click on it, drag it onto the screen. Now I want that to fill the whole page. And down here in the middle on our little um, menu, I can click on fit to the background. And that's now entered into my background. So I'm really quite happy with that. I now want to think about, oh, I want some characters and things to add in here. So I'm going to go back into my content. And I said I was going to do the story of the Gruffalo. So I'm going to add in, a little image of the Gruffalo. So I'm going to go into Bing, just my images, and I'm going to choose that Gruffalo. I'm going to choose a mouse. So, oh, I like that mouse eating the nut. So I'll drop that one on. Um, do you know what? I'm going to put a second mouse in because I do really like mice. Um, drop that one in and I'll put one more character in. I'll put the owl in. So let's see. I'll pull him across there as well. So at the moment, I've got the content that I want. The characters are all on there. Um, so I'm just going to close that content page. And like you'll have seen before in Gareth's um, presentation earlier, it's got these white backgrounds on it and you can't really see it. So again, they're really quite large. I'm just going to use these nodes and just make them all a little bit smaller. So let's shrink those down. I'm using crosshairs to get to those bottom nodes. There we go. And I can use those crosshairs to move things around easily on my page. And again, just shrink those down. Now you'll notice that the owl has come out already um, with a transparent background, which is great. So all I need to do is resize the owl and I'm going to pop him over on a branch there. And again, just like Gary showed you before, with the remove the background, little teardrop or raindrop with the eye and um, with the line through it, just click on that and that will remove your background really quick and easy now you can if you want to have a little tinker so you can see here that it's still left a little white bit there so i am going to try and remove that by using the fill and the transparency so it's that far bottom right one that has a little cross hairs cross hatch on it um, and i'll just click on it there Hopefully in our Gruffalo, it will allow me to remove that little white bit. Oh, it doesn't want to remove it on this one. One more try. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You can, if you want to, go in and use the eraser to remove that there then as well. So let's get back to setting our scenes. I'm going to make that mouse a lot smaller and I'm going to pop him in the background so it looks like he's deep in the woods. I'll make this mouse a little bit smaller as well. And I'll bring him down to here. I'll pop a Gruffalo here. So my characters are all there set. Now, I would like to be able to link this into another theme as well. So I'm going to go back to my content and I'm going to add maybe a cave 
for the Gruffalo to go into. So I'm going to search for, it needs to be snowy, a snowy cave in a forest. So I'll put those keywords in, see what comes up. Oh, I quite like that one. So again, click on it, drag it onto my page. And now I've got all the content that I need for my interactive scene. So again, I am happy with that image, but it's a little bit big and I think I'm going to trim it a little bit. So just as before, into the crop tools, and I'm going to use the freehand crop to select the bit of cave that I want. So I'm just going to draw that section. I might pop a couple of those little trees in so it just blends in nicely. And there we go. It makes that duplicate of our cave that part that I wanted so this one I don't need so I can just delete it and as before Gareth showing you previously it's like oh it sits in front of everything I want that to move further back so in the stacking I'm going to move it to the back so the gruffalo is in front of it and I'm going to just make it a little bit smaller so it fits in there so I'm now ready to give some direction of what I'd like my characters to do and my objects to do. So when I'm in present mode, it will be able to be interactive and move around. So the Gruffalo, I might make him a little bit bigger because he is a big, scary Gruffalo. I'm going to click on those three little dots um, from the floating toolbar and I'm going to put in editable while presenting. So I'll click on that one for him. It'll turn blue to show that I've got that. The mouse eating the nut, I'm not going to do anything to him, but you will see whenever I click on it. So if you add an image in and you click on it, it will just zoom in and you get a really big picture of the mouse. Um, on the owl, I am going to add a link. I'm going to select a file that I want it to link to. So I've already got this takes me to the files on my computer that I've set up and I've already downloaded an owl hoot ready. So I'm going to select the owl hoot because when I click on it I would like to hear that sound and I'm going to select that and then click OK. And then finally the little mouse at the bottom, the last character, I'm going to, oh, I'm not going to link that one. I'm going to replicate that one. So it means it's going to clone when I'm touching it. And of course, I put the cave in and I want that to link and go somewhere else. So when we've run the cave, we can click and link it to our next slide. So I've already put an image in the background using the content search ready there for us. So I'm going to take it to slide number two. Now I think we're good to present now. So I'm going to go back down to my little hamburger menu and I'm going to start the presentation. So I'm going to move over to the whiteboard um, to my panel because it's really easy to do it with the touch. So We've got the scary Gruffalo who's walking through the woods. Looks like he's up to mischief and he spies the mouse who's eating a nut and it's magic. Makes the mouse really big when he's eating his nut. Then the owl spots the Gruffalo and he begins to hoot. Which sends that warning to the little mouse on the ground who brings his army of friends and the Gruffalo sees them all and gets a little bit scared. So he then turns on his heels in the transform menu there and he runs back to the safety of his cave and he goes into his cave and he's there uh, happily snuggled up with his family. So he's quite safe. And I'm going to stop presenting that one now. And it always gives me the option of, do you want to keep changes while presenting? So I'm going to click no, so that when I go back, 
you can see it is still all set how I originally left it, not with multiple mice on the screen, which is really nice. So you can reuse that another time. So that is the end of our creating an interactive scene using our links whiteboard. I'm now going to do our final top tip of the day, which is using the split shape. So I've just opened up on another blank canvas. And again, I'm going to go into my content here. Um, and instead of going in the media search, I'm going to go in the local search in the local content. And I know Gareth had already shown you and talked about some of the mathematical tools and interactive things. You've got different backgrounds there. You can also put your own um, resources in there as well. So if I just go back home there, I'm going to go into our shapes down here at the bottom. So I'm going to just click and drag on a circle and you can split circles, squares and rectangles within here. Now you can see as with any um, item we put on the board, you will get your little floating toolbar with it. In this case, I can change the color. So just by using the little paint bot, I can change whichever color I would like it to be. I can also change the width and the color of the pen. So I can have it really thick if I wanted to. Just make it a little bit smaller. You can even change the color of it. You can also change the style. So if you want it as a dotted line, I'm going to leave it as a solid line there. So I've got my shape. I'm now going to go down to the bottom to the little knife down here. And I'm going to go on to our prop tools there. And I'm going to click on our shape split. And all I need to do is now click on that shape and I can split it in to different segments. Now, the great thing with this as well, it's fabulous for teaching fractions. I can then remove different parts. So I could remove those together like so. I can also, each one then becomes and has its own floating toolbar, so I can change the colours um, of those. So you can have all that discussion of the what's the yellow fraction worth, what's the blue fraction worth, what have I taken away, what have I removed, and if I just group those two together, and I'll put them as a different colour. Let's have, oh, you see that's how I will go with the grey. And I'm going to group that together. So that's as one item there. So we're going to move it. But the lovely thing about this as well is you can go onto it. And if you click on the little angle, you can have it so it shows the radius. You can also have it that it shows the angle. So 51 for each of those segments. So you can then have the discussions and things like, so if I know that the yellow segment is 51 degrees, what will the gray segment be? What will the blue segment be? You can have all those sorts of discussions. You can also still annotate and move using the node. So I can increase that angle just to check. So it's 51, we think. And um, what would it be? We think 102. Is that the same as the gray one? You can annotate, rotate it around, see if it matches up. And again, if it's going just behind, you can put it in front just by using the stacker menu. So if I bring that up to the front, There we go. You can see that it fits on top. Just turn that over so slightly. And then you can even use your transparency, that little hide and preview to change to see if it's the same. So yes, you were right that the gray, the two gray sections are the same as two of the yellow sections. And have all those discussions. It's going to go to another page and show you another way that you can use the split shape tool. So uh, this time I've pulled out a square. I'm just going to edit it a little bit and change it so make it a little bit bigger. And again, you can change the color of it if you'd like to. The 
line thickness and color and type and this time i'm going to go back into our crop tools and our shape split and for this if you pull down click and drag down you will get your rows and then if I want to go across, I will get my columns. And again, you can see that those are all separate. So there's lots of things you can do with that. You can create tables. In this one, I am going to create a bit of a jumbled sentence. So I'm going to remove that content part there because I have finished with it. And the great thing with this is you can type into those boxes there as well as you go. So the baby, let's have the baby kangaroo. Started. Ross. The. Busy. Road. And then what you can do, because that type's all a little bit small, you can drag across them all. You can go in and change your text color. You can go in and choose a different font. So I'm just going to quickly go in and we'll change it to a different style. These are just ones I have on my computer and I'll make it all a little bit bigger so we can see those nice and clearly. So I'll just click off that and you can see those are all easy to edit. So I'll just jumble them about a little bit. You can, if you want to go into present mode, you can select those all again and the three dots to enable while presenting. So then when I go into my present mode, and I ask pupils to come up and sort out the jumbled sentence. They can do so they can quickly move the words around and get them into the right places. You could also even have them identifying um, sort of the adjectives. So it's like, oh, can you spot any adjectives? And if you can, you might click on one and you might change the color. Oh, well done. Yes, the baby kangaroo, that's our adjective. And oh, what's the one for road? Yes, so we could click on the busy and change the color of that as well so it is really quick and easy to do and lots of uses there as well you can focus on any sort of grammatical things with that as well so whether it was your prepositions or your verbs or conjunctions there's lots of ideas there so that is our split shape um top tip there for you i hope you enjoyed the sessions um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen at the moment and we will pass back to Harvey to find out if we've got any questions. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? OK. Yeah, I'm going to put that camera on and I'm wondering if it will pick up from there. So can we hear Harvey at all? We can look can you hear me? in the Q&A section anyway and answer any questions that there. Yeah. Is that answered for? Can we have a look at them? Oh, thank you, Matt. Oh, thank you very much, Matt. What's in the answer area? Oh, yeah. Just in case there's anything we can add to. Yeah. If you look at the tab. Oh, right yeah. That's it. Oh, oh right. lovely. All right, Italy and Hungary, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, if you have any later on, you can still email us. So uh, my email address is gareth.middleton at clevertouch.com and it's jilly.fraser at clevertouch.com. Yes, wow. indeed. Um, if you have any questions, for us later on. Um, so how much does links cost? Well, it's totally free. So if you... Um, Basically, just go to your app store and search for Links or you can download it onto your device. Um, the only uh, place where you need to pay for it in a way is that if you want it as an app on your actual Clevertip screen, then obviously you need to be a Clevertip customer to bought one of our impact screens and you can download it from our Clever store. However, the free version you can have on any device, you can, of course, 
put that device into your screen and use it um, in, the, in the touch screen capacity. Um, if anybody does want any additional training or anything, obviously we can offer that. 